everyone! Welcome back Morning. to Cooking in Little Bear. Today, Kendrick and I are both going to take on a challenge. I am going to attempt to make a sourdough bread using uh, my friend's sourdough starter in the Dutch oven. I'm not really teaching you how to do it, I'm more just bringing you along on the adventure because I have no idea what I'm doing. I am going to use the leftover chicken parts from our rotisserie chickens that we got a few nights ago to make a homemade chicken stock and then use that to make a chicken and lentil and split pea soup. It is early, we're starting with coffee, and I'm gonna get my dough going because this is gonna be an all day affair. So the first step to this experiment, as I'm going to call it, is to divide my starter out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and feed it, so I'm gonna divide what I'm gonna just put back in the fridge to use later, and what I'm gonna use today. Then I'm gonna feed it by mixing in flour and warm water. And then we're gonna let it sit and get bubbly and rise, and hopefully that will happen. All right, while Mandy's waiting on the yeast for the bread to rise, I'm going to get going on our chicken stock. It's a pretty simple recipe. Just need some chicken carcass remains, a leek, four carrots, four sticks of celery, a couple cloves of garlic, an onion, some parsley, bay leaves, black peppercorn. Ideally, we would have pressed thyme, but uh, we couldn't find any at the store, so we're gonna use dry. The tools that you need for the job are pretty simple as well. A stock pot, spoon, a knife to cut up some of the veggies, and then a carrot peeler. So our first step will be cleaning the veggies and then kind of breaking them into about two to four inch pieces. Throw everything in the pot, cover it with uh, water, and then start bringing it to a boil. Once the first bubbles start to come up, we're gonna take it back down to about medium low heat and just let it simmer for about four to eight hours. All right, so we still have our stock going over here. It smells amazing. And as you can see, the starter that I fed this morning has doubled in size and it's also really nice and bubbly. So we're ready to mix our dough. Usually you could put all the ingredients into one big bowl, but we live in a tiny camper and I don't have a big mixing bowl. So I have measured out my ingredients in exact halves and I'm gonna mix it in two bowls just because I don't have one big bowl. So we're going to mix our flour, our lukewarm water, and our even parts of the sourdough starter into the two bowls. Now we get to wait again. We're gonna cover each one with a damp cloth and then we'll check on it in about an hour. On a floured surface, we're going to pull and fold the dough four times each, once in each direction. Then we're gonna shape our dough into a nice round ball and you guessed it, let it sit longer. While our dough is rising and our stock is simmering, there's only one thing left to do. Since we have two loaves of bread, I decided why not experiment with two different cooking methods. So one loaf I'm going to cook in our Lodge cast iron Dutch oven, and the other loaf I'm gonna try inside on our Omnia oven. Well, I decided to use our five quart uh, Dutch oven, even though it seems like a little bit of overkill. I tried this a couple days ago with our two quart Dutch oven and it was way too small. So for the cast iron loaf, I'm gonna make a couple of slits on the top of the bread, as well as use parchment paper under the bread because the internet told me so. All right, as always, the first step towards cooking over a campfire is making a campfire. I had to let it go for about an hour or so to get some good coals to cook over. So now we just wait and enjoy a nice beer from Colorado. All right, here we are. Our stock's been going for nearly five and a half hours now, and I'm getting all of our ingredients ready to make our soup. So we'll be putting in our chopped celery, onion, carrot, and garlic, lentils and split peas, of course, rotisserie chicken that we uh, use for our stock, for spices, we have bay leaves, basil, rosemary, cumin, thyme, salt, black pepper, and we'll use olive oil to saute the veggies before we put the rest of the soup ingredients in. Almost ready. All right, so we have our loaf of bread in here. I am going to put it on the side of the fire where we have scooted a bunch of coals. So we have fire going on over there to create more coals and we can rotate them as we need. Probably going to take 30 to 
45 minutes to cook this loaf. And about halfway through, I'm gonna throw some coals on the lid so that the top cooks as well. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes with the bread over the fire. I've been rotating it a quarter turn every couple minutes just to keep it even. It could be totally not cooked or it could be like a black ball of fire. So I really have no idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a really quick peek at it to see uh, what the status is. All right, it looks like it's cooking pretty nice. All right, it's been 42 minutes, the answer to everything. So I feel like our bread's gonna be good. Don't fall in the fire though, that's bad. Oh my gosh, that bread looks amazing. There we go. Oh, that looks great. Yay, bread. <laughs> Hooray for dumb luck. <laughs> All right, ideally we would have a strainer and some cheesecloth to filter all of the solids out of our freshly made chicken stock, but we don't. So we're gonna have to improvise. We'll probably use this lid to uh, filter out some of the solids and pour it into a couple of containers because we don't have anything big enough to hold all of the fluid. And we're gonna have soup here pretty soon. All right, the Dutch oven's pretty warm, so we're just gonna go ahead and hit the ground running. We're gonna put some olive oil into the pot and then let that heat up for a minute or so. Where we add our onion, carrot, celery, and minced garlic. We're gonna saute that for a little bit, then throw our chicken in there and kind of stir that around for a little bit, let it heat up. We have about, what was it, 10 cups of chicken stock after all of our hard work and now it's gonna go here into the chicken and veggies and then eventually we'll add the lentils and split peas. It has came to a boil so now it's time to add our lentils and split peas. And last but not least, add all of your spices. Chicken, lentil, and split pea soup. 10 hours in the making. One great thing about recipes like this, yeah, they take all day to cook, but you do it on, say, a, a Sunday. You just cook all day long, and then you have food for the entire week. First bite on a piece of Mandy's freshly homemade sourdough bread, amazing. So how many days of leftovers do you think this will last us? It's gonna be a while. <laughs> Still in the last little piece of bread. I'll cut more. You know, if it hadn't been for this uh, whole COVID thing, we never would have done this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this meal as much as we did, but I know you didn't because we enjoyed it way more. It's pretty amazing. So as always, I know we weren't very specific with all of the amounts in the video because that's really hard to do. So check out the link in the description below and it will take you to my blog with the full detailed recipe for our chicken stew. Here's to patience while campfire cooking. <gasps> Love and light. Lentil down. Yeah, oh, that's where it went. I saw one fall. I didn't see where it went. Like we could bite. cheers with our uh, sand with our bite. Do it over the bread instead of over yeah. the whiskey. Don't like, touch that. It's hot. Or like right here. Yeah. <laughs>